I'm Adam Biggers, and I'm here with Detroit Lions legendary wide receiver Herman Moore. Herman, when we we talked a little bit about Titus Young earlier, I mean, he has the potential, uh, we both agree, to be a number two receiver. What kind of impact can he have, and what type of player is he that maybe uh, Lions fans don't recognize? I think he has the ability to have a lot of impact for the team. We saw that last year uh, during the 2011 season. I thought he came on and, and had a pretty good season uh, from his rookie year. He's going to push, I think, Nate Burleson a little bit at that number two spot. And a lot of that's going to just come from the fact that there's always a competitive drive between wide receivers. I mean, Calvin Johnson clearly is going to be their number one guy. But um, it reminded me of when we had Brett Perriman and Johnny Morton. And those guys were really pushing one another to see who would be that second receiver. And it, it, it creates an interesting you know, situation in, in competition and practice. And it keeps everyone on their toes. But... Uh, for him, you just there's nothing but upside, and you look at what he was able to accomplish in such a short period of time, and being a very young player, he's going to just continue to get better and grow. And I think he can also use a person like Nate um, as a mentor and someone that uh, can help him. They got Sean Jefferson, who also is a, a great coach, and I think he's he's in a very good spot to continue to become a very good player for the Lions for not just you know short term but long term. We talked a little bit about what what Young could do in in terms of coverage. How does he open up the field for Calvin Johnson, or how could he open up the field for Calvin Johnson? Well, the biggest thing you're going to look at is how do you have him transition from being just a receiver who's going to get you know individual coverage or just have to deal with the zone coverage uh, to a player that teams are game planning around and having to you know maybe match him up with a linebacker and a, and a defensive back or do some type of combination that draws coverage from Nate or, or draws coverage away from Calvin. Um, that's when you'll see him start to make even a greater contribution to the offense. And then also, you know, you always look for your receivers out on the perimeter, see how they block. I, I wasn't able to see from the television angle too often uh, what his blocking skills were like, but uh, I, I think he can continue to contribute as it relates to the team by uh, just getting better, being more productive, and also just staying consistent. If he stays consistent, the teams will have to game plan for that. And, and final question for you, Herman. I mean, you look at you got a r rookie Ryan Broyles out of Oklahoma coming in. There's Titus Young. There's Nate Burleson. There's Calvin Johnson. This seems like it's a pretty stout uh, receiving core uh, the Lions have this year. What, what's your opinion just overall on the guys that they have catching the ball? It's a strong unit. Uh, there's depth, and that's what you look for. Injuries, you never know when someone's going to get injured. And in your skill positions, that's when a lot of the injuries will occur. And uh, the more depth you can have at that position, especially if there can be receivers that can step in and replace and you don't have a drop off. That's the whole key when you start talking about depth. You, know, you hear a lot of teams talk about, oh, we got a lot of depth in positions. But there is a drop off when you bring one guy in and, and replacing another guy. But the Lions, it seems like they put together a really solid unit that uh, can continue to you know, give Matthew Stafford uh, some targets to throw the football to. Excellent. I appreciate your time today, Herman. Always, Adam. Thank you.